Hi, welcome to this tutorial series about creating these kinds of glasses in Blender. This will be a four part series. We will model all these free glasses over three videos. And in the fourth video, we will talk about some rendering and shading settings I use with glass. So let's start with the first glass, the one with the crisscross pattern. And I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Have fun. So let's start with the first glass. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm adding a plane to the scene, switch to edit mode, rotate it 90 degrees along the X axis. So if you press one on numpad, we see the front of the face. Back to edit mode, I'm gonna subdivide it one time, go to object mode again, press control two and control two adds a subdivision surface modifier. I'll set that to simple when I remove optimal display and switch to uh, pressing C and switch to wireframe mode, you can see it's subdivided in a linear and not in a smooth way. Well, what we're gonna do next is we add a decimate modifier and in a decimate modifier, we use the unsubdivide mode because it allows us to rotate the topology by 45 degrees. And this is very useful for the shape we want to achieve. We apply the subdivision modifier, apply the decimate modifier. What I'm doing next is select everything, press I for inset, and I don't want to inset the full face, I just want to inset every single face, so pressing inset twice does that. And when you move the mouse, you can see I can inset every single face. Uh, another nice trick you can do here is press control, and control will move this inwards and outwards. I am changing the view so you can see it better. So press I, I twice until we have a nice, yeah, I think this will work. Press control and move it a bit outwards. This is good. And for our glass, we mainly gonna use these two. That's why I'm using the knife tool to make a cut here, make a cut here, making a cut here. So making a cut here. If you don't wanna make cuts, you can also select the faces, press J, I select the words, not the faces, press J, and press J with C. I select all the inner faces I have here, press Ctrl I to invert my selection, X, and remove the faces. Next, I'm gonna select these three edges, subdivide them, merge the outer words, press M, merge them at the center, Select the inner one and the last and the outer one. Press M, merge at last. I make sure I use the snapping mode, vertex, select it, G, Y, and move it here. And I'm gonna remove this one with Control X and this one with Control X. I'm using the knife tool again to make a cut in the half or use again J to join our words k set pressing c selecting all the faces on the right side deleting them and using the knife again making a cut in this half pressing c selecting all these faces deleting them because what we're gonna do now we could have joined the others also manually but we also can just mirror this and mirror it also along C and it looks good. Apply the mirror modifier. What we're gonna do next, we are adding an array modifier. Just arraying it eight times will be fine. We add a simple deform modifier because this helps us to bend the mesh. Instead of twist, we use the bend option because it allows us to bend a mesh along 360 degrees but currently we have the wrong axis selected. We bend it 360 degrees along the Z axis. This looks already pretty promising. In the array modifier, what we're gonna also set is merge. First and last and merge. So everything is gonna be merge. We set this to smooth. And one important thing we have to do is select every edge that should be sharp. I should have done this before I mirrored it. To make it easier so I'm just gonna do that 
I'm selecting everything here again. Remove the faces. So select all the edges I want to be sharp. I remove the visibility of these because this is a bit annoying. Right click, mark sharp. And what I also want to do is we might want to subdivide later to make a smoother shape. So we crease these, set it to set crease to one. We set the shade auto smooth and we have sharp edges here now. Add our mirror modifier back and the mirror modifier needs to be on top of the stack. X and Z make the other modifiers visible again and we have our round shape. What is annoying is this hard edge here. We don't want that. What we're gonna do about it, we add a weld modifier. And what this weld modifier is gonna do with the right distance sets, it welds these eight edges together. To make this glass a bit more round and smooth, we need more resolution, especially resolution along the Z axis. So I'm gonna apply the mirror modifier and we have only three cuts along the Z axis and we need a few more. This can be easily done by just using our knife tool again K, Z and K, Z to the bottom. Again for the other side. K, Z to the bottom. And you already see this looks better. If you go very close up, you can still see the edges. So it might be a good idea to increase the resolution even further keep the topology as even as possible and set a subdivide also set here subdivide okay, yeah. subdivide everywhere same here subdivide select the, the bottom and the top press j and it will connect them j and j and J again and now it looks pretty 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 round to me so always save I think this is a good point to save or make a duplicate as a backup because what we're gonna do next is apply the modifiers so we want to make sure is every edge sharp that we want to be sharp yes it looks like it so what I'm gonna do I'm pressing shift D moving it by the side press M New collection, calling it backup. Because always when I applying a modifier, I want to have a backup object of it. Disable my backup. Before we apply the modifiers, I don't like what is happening here because I think this will cause issues later. So I'm using the knife tools, connecting it like this. Do this for every side where we have this edge. And after that, we select this, press Ctrl X, uh, reconnect our loops again with using J, applying every modifier from top to bottom. So first the array, apply the deform, apply the weld, and this looks pretty good to me. So what we're gonna do next, we close our cylinders for the bottom we want some beveling with control B we want to have some nice bevel depending on the shape you want you can press P and adjust the curvature of the bevel but I think the one that is set as default works quite well in this case we have our smooth edge at the bottom so for the top I'm gonna inset it just have some realistic thickness, eyeball it, then extrude it and to have the right thickness press Alt Z and here you can see how far we extrude it. She said I think a bit over these uh, sharp edges is fine so it's not too thick. Also bevel here because glasses are usually beveled. 
and this already looks looks pretty good to me i would like to add a few more details to the bottom so i insert it here press g z move to the bottom so we have a dent at the bottom adding a loop cut bevel this loop cut but with only two bevels you will soon see why i move this one a bit more outwards with gg then select this center ring exclude the borders go to select check id select i tested it earlier because it was already set at four but when you open it it will be set like uh, maybe at two but i think this will also work yeah maybe it will be set at one this this is too much in my opinion for what we want to do so set it to two two will work fine and what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna bevel this with three bevels we select everything again exclude the borders and what i want to select now is the center of the bevel so between the center and the next center there are one two three four so checker deselect four and set an offset and i only have the center selected pressing alt s moving them inwards next we're going to select this ring gg moving a bit inwards Control b beveling it so we get a nice nicer shape i'm doing something similar with the insides selecting the center circle Control plus Control x because i only want these inner ones and i'm gonna select them here press s scale them inwards and after after moving them inwards i'm selecting this outer ring here control bevel it to smoothen it out let's see i think like this yeah this should this should work fine glasses are usually smooth at the top we don't want to cut our mouth open but what you shouldn't do is just just bevel the top it will it will make them it, it will make it round but it's not like like real glasses look real glasses look different they're not just just beveled at the top what you see with real glasses is some kind of additional roundness they have so to add that i'm gonna add a loop cut here with Control r shift d it move it a bit to the top press p to separate it separate it by selection and now we have two objects we have the glass and we have the loop cut and what i'm going to do with this loop cut is i right click it convert it to a curve and in the curve menu under geometry i'm going to add some depth to it i recommend to switch into the front view with numpad one get close to the glass move the curve down increase the depth until you think you have just the right you just hit the right size this is not enough it needs to be a bit more let's see zero zero three now that's a bit too much zero dot zero two five this looks this looks good i'm gonna go with this value so to give the curve a bit more resolution to get more roundness at this edge 24 oh no I, I need to add the not the resolution here we keep it at 12 we add the we increase the resolution here this is the right one 12 here shade smooth it convert it back to a mesh select our newly created mesh and select the glass press ctrl j so there one mesh again go into edit mode and they align perfectly but we need to connect them right now select the curve with l hide it for now we select this ring we created we move the vertices to open the glass alt h to bring our ring back go into the glass what happens in the inside i'm selecting this pressing ctrl plus 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 maybe one more plus remove the faces and when we move this one up now we can create a slight hole between the glass and the ring 
And what I'm going to do next is select the edge of the ring, select the edge of the glass, press F3, type in bridge, bridge edge loops. So it's connected. And we do the same for the inside. F3, bridge edge loops. It's connected, but it's not great because it's too sharp. So we select this ring, GG, Z, move it a bit down to have a more organic connection. I recommend doing the same with the inside. Select the ring, GG, move it down. Looks fine to me. What you can do next to have set up a simple shader, set it to cycles. So with a height of 1.5 meters, it's a pretty huge glass scaling down by 10. So S0.1 to a more realistic size. And what we should do, we should apply the scale by moving it a bit upwards, adding another plane. So we have some shadows here and just adding a simple shader for now. Go back to our glass, new, don't want the principal BSDF for now, a simple glass shader will do fine and what i also want is an hdi to have some basic lighting so in going into my asset browser i'm using a basic hdri from polyhaven i will put the link in the description to polyhaven you get a lot of hdris there i recommend adding something to your glass shader because right now this glass looks like we're gonna cut cut our hands open when we touch it we don't want it so when we set up bevel shader this is this is happening not what we want but this is easily fixable the radius is too high so set this to 001 and you can see we decrease the bevel what happens if i add it to 0007 yeah this is this is better we have a beveled glass we have a reflection you might see some slight shading issues here let's see if they are fixed when i add a weighted normal modifier keep sharp and this looks way better now. So we have our first glass finished. So let's move on to the, to the next one. 